the company's current strength and also to create uh, future both from an intellectual property point of view and also from a competitive advantage point of view uh, you know, for the company. Mm -hmm. The current system that's in place, uh, which is surprisingly effective, I mean, fortunately very effective already, but of course can be improved. Um, even though I still don't have a complete understanding of all of those details, it's already apparent to me that there are several types of opportunities here. I think there are a lot of machine learning opportunities that involve specific tasks that the system has to do. For example, the system has to learn has to estimate for every given student what do they know and not know. Where are they in the terms of the knowledge graph of different learning points? And um, what are the implications of that in terms of what question or what lecture they should receive next? If you take even that kind of specific question, um, we're in a position, because of the many students that are using the system, to collect already data at scale of basically training examples of the form. Uh, here's what we think the current uh, student state is. Here's the action that we actually did take. Here's the uh, next educational training step we provided. And then downstream, here's what we think is the state of knowledge of the student. So, you just took that data and start and run on uh, current technology machine learning algorithms. We'd already have, uh, you know, be learning a function that goes from current student state and action that was taken to observe next student knowledge state. So that's just one example of many different functions. That's the way I think of machine learning. I think of Machine learning in terms of, um, let's identify some function that would be useful to know. Let's see if we've got the training data. Let's pull in the right learning algorithm to do it. So there's an example of a function from the current knowledge state and the action that was taken to the next knowledge state that I think would be very helpful to learn and for which we have the data. And so it's a matter of setting it up. So I can see already multiple examples of very specific functions like that. The complement to this is that I can also uh, begin to see how we could um, not just piecewise learn these functions, but put together into the architecture a kind of uh, process that looks at the end-to-end -end behavior of the system, meaning a student comes in in August, they take a course, they pass, in the next semester they sign up for another course, uh, they do okay, but they don't quite remember all the material that they learned the first semester. So learning that's based on a long end-to-end -end performance of students going through the system. And there, I think, a good jumping off point, a good starting point, is reinforcement learning algorithms that fortunately can take in reinforcement learning algorithms like the ones used for uh, learning to play Go. If you think about it, what they do is they, they take training data of the form, here's a long sequence of actions that was performed. And here's what the state looked like at each step here. In the case of Go, those are board states and actions in the Go game. But in the student case, those are student states and the teaching actions that were taken. And uh, by defining what the long-term goal is, winning the Go game or uh, really learning the materials so that you can do well on the final exams, uh, Reinforcement learning is a nice framework for learning across these long periods of time, across many actions. And so I think one of the really interesting things to do 
starting right now, is to frame the very encompassing learning problem of teaching the student and choosing the right sequence of actions, and really frame that in concrete terms as a reinforcement learning problem. What would be the reward functions, the goals that we specify? And it won't be just one, it'll be multiple goals. We not only want to, we do want to pass the exam, but we also want to teach as efficiently as we can. We also want to teach so that the student remembers the material, they retain it next semester. So there are multiple goals having to do with efficiency of teaching, the quality of what gets learned, the ability to retain that knowledge in future semesters and use it for new, uh, new kinds of tasks. And so um, I'm excited to, to get started uh, working with the people who architect the system and uh, working together with them to try to see if we can together put together that kind of overall encompassing framework. And then as a practical matter, I think what we want to do is pursue that kind of overarching framework in parallel with picking these low-hanging fruit specific machine learning tasks that uh, we know we have the data for and that we think would be useful things to improve the capability of the system. So I think it's a kind of two-thrust effort that seems to be a good way to get going.